I don't know if you've listened to the episode 51 uh, about happiness with Mo Good at, but this is one of the most listened to episodes of my podcast. Quite amazing content. So I decided to receive Mo again, but this time to talk about this new spirituality of society. Spirituality may sound kind of weird to some of you, but actually, if you're looking in a sense of your life, if you are interested in self-development, I'm quite sure this podcast will talk directly to your heart. So I'll let you listen to it. Allez, venons. C'est parti. Hello, Mo. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while that we've been talking together. Um, we've we've been recording together an episode about happiness, and uh, actually, that's the most listened episode on my podcast. Uh, thank oh, you for wow. that. Yeah, oh, it that's is. great news. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it 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 shows what people are looking for. Yeah, amongst the eighty-five <laughs> episodes, that's the most listened to uh, episode. Oh it's God. great. I'm honored. Thank you. <laughs> so we are not together right now. You're in uh, Dominican Republic. Yes, um, yes I am. And uh, the, the subject I wanted to talk about with you is uh, spirituality, because hmm. it's been a while that I'm thinking that uh, the world needs a, a new spirituality uh, somehow, like not... Um, uh, not specifically based on a religion, uh, but based on how we... Uh, envision life and success and, uh, you know, the subjects we talked about. And I was wondering who would be the best person to talk about that. And I thought, well, Mo would be just perfect to talk about uh, what's the new <laughs> spirituality of uh, the humankind, or at least uh, the Occidental world humankind should be. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. I'm, 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 I'm definitely not the best person for that, but <laughs> let's give it a try. <laughs> let's give it a try then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really, it really depends on how you define spirituality. Huh? So, so, uh, so there are so many brand names that we live with in our world that are actually very, you know, truly stripped of their true value. Uh, you know, the, 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 when we, when we describe something with a word, we truly dilute its essence. Huh? So, so if I, if I use the word, uh, tower, hmm, uh, there are many towers around the world, you know, so can you compare the Eiffel Tower to the, uh, um, you know, um, uh, whatever residential tower uh, that someone built in uh, here in uh, in Cabarete that is four four stories high, huh? Uh -huh. But we use you we use the word tower, and in in doing so, we lose the essence of what the word actually means. Uh, I think spirituality is probably one of the most mis misused words uh, in in our world today. You know, it 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 really is misunderstood uh, it's mixed up with the word religion uh, it is uh, you know it was sort of uh, restricted to the religious institutions for many many years that if you want to be spiritual you have to come through us and now perhaps it's being restricted to california you know with the white <laughs> flowy dresses and yeah if you want to be spiritual let us show you what spirituality is and you know what really is spirituality and and because of my engineering approach to things i tend to always start with an accurate definition uh, that i uh, that i uh, you know can associate with uh -huh. and so in my own personal definition of of spirituality it comes from spirit and spirit is the religious word used to describe the other part of you and i think that's really where the core of the conversation starts i mean is this the extent of us is our physical form uh, the 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 total of who we are or is there more to the human uh, than uh, than uh, than just our physical form and if then uh, if there is whether you want to call it a spirit or you want to call it anything else it doesn't matter spirituality would be how do you relate to that other part of you to that other uh, com the, to, to, to find that completeness of you that goes beyond just the physical into the spiritual, if you want. Uh, on the same token, you would also uh, realize that if there is more to us than our physical form, then there could be more to everything physical than, uh, than just the physical. There could be more to the universe than just its, its physical elements. There could be something bigger than all of us, which in religion is called the divine or God mm -hmm. or Allah or whatever it is that you want to call it. Uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the views of it are massively varied if you actually study across religions. Um, and again, if there is something bigger than all of us, then how do we relate to it? And that's what spirituality, in my definition, is all about. 
Interesting. So in in my perspective, I feel like um, we, we as humans are kind of disconnect with this uh, other part of us, but also this other part of the world. Like uh, we, we tend to consider nature and by nature, I mean um, vegetation, but also animals, uh, whatever is living, <laughs> but human uh, and, and even somehow humans as um, a means to do something. So we consume hmm. uh, the world somehow and we consume nature and we consume animals. We consider them as a, as a raw materials, not really as another part of, uh, of us, uh, if, you, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, and, yeah. um, and also in this uh, new spirituality that I'm thinking about, it's probably uh, about uh, how we do consider um, Success, you know, uh, we talked about that together, um, but within a year I was thinking, and also because of the people that I've been uh, receiving here on my podcast, that it's a lot about cash flow, um, mm -hmm. but there's so much more than cash flow. It can be uh, an, uh, an invite of me. Uh, uh, another uh, person that I invited was like, oh yeah, I reduced my cash flow, but I augmented my forest flow, my surf flow. You know what I mean? And it's probably... Uh, this balance that we need to uh, consider also. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a, a great way to start, uh, you know, to, to, to reflect and say, um, we uh, as humans, uh, no, no one wakes up in the morning to screw up, okay? Every single one of us is trying to achieve the best they can with the information that they were given in terms of what it is that you define the best as. Unfortunately, because of our highly capitalist, highly consumer driven world, uh, uh, you know, because of marketing and advertising, and I, I say that with love and respect for, for the podcast, <laughs> but, the, I, but the idea is that we are constantly telling people that there is one way to define success in life. There is one way to, de to define beauty. There is one way uh, to define uh, achievement. And And unfortunately, none of that is actually true at all. I mean, you go around the world and you look at all of the different uh, shapes and forms and features of humans that are all beautiful uh, in, in the eyes of a specific person with a specific taste, right? And, and you start to realize that perhaps the commonly defined uh, 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 approach to what success is, is probably flawed. And it's actually, and I would say it's definitely flawed. So I was the, the, the victim of that. I spent the early years of my life, perhaps the first 25 years of my life, which in many ways are the most productive years of anyone's life in terms of energy and effort and, and so on, hopefully to be compensated for by wisdom in the, in the later years. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but so much of my energy and effort was put behind making money, growing my title, uh, achieving net worth that is measured in dollar signs. Mm -hmm. truth, truth is... Uh, you, you know, my mission, my mission is one billion happy. And I actually often publicly tell people that, you know, imagine if by the end of my life, I managed to uh, uh, provide a message of happiness to a billion people, lost every dollar I have ever earned working at Google, and basically had enough money left to buy one more Pink Floyd t-shirts at the t-shirt at 1999 <laughs> before I die, right? Would you consider that success? Would you consider that success? A billion happy people instead of a billion dollars, would that be considered success? Now, it takes us back to spirituality, Greg. And the, and the idea is that most of the spiritual and religious teachings of humanity have always targeted only two things. I've studied across every spiritual, every religious uh, uh, teaching that you can ever find. They always go back to two things. One is alleviating your own suffering. Mm -hmm. And the other is alleviating the suffering of others. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, every religion, if you if you drop everything that that, that man made, that was man made, that was added by the saints and the teachers and the right, that wasn't really the core message of a religion or a spiritual teaching. It was simply about: Can we make you go through this life uh, in the best possible way so that you don't suffer? And can we teach you the compassion? so that you can make others succeed and find happiness so that they don't suffer, okay? And if you take that as the core of spirituality, then success becomes a very, very, very different definition. Totally, and I think uh, 
going back to your example with your Pink Floyd T-shirt, I guess people when they um, you know um, try to get as much dollars uh, as they <laughs> yeah. can, they probably also think about their children and thinking, okay, I need to to give them something. Uh, oh my but, God! Yeah, I mean that's probably what people are thinking about so, when they're earning money. But isn't isn't that stupid? I mean, I I I, I know this sounds horrible if I say this, but I. You know, I succeeded in life. In the material world, I succeeded. I had planned everything, everything for my son Ali. I had his tuition set aside. I bought up, you know, properties for him so that he can have passive income when he graduates. I even started businesses uh, for him so that when he graduates, he can run them. And as he changed majors, he changed majors three times in his university years, I would start another business every time. You know, that's how... Uh, uh, you know, committed I was to give my son <laughs> a life uh, that is uh, that is uh, you know a comfortable life as he as he as he graduates, and then he left us right through due due to a totally unexpected uh, human error in a simple medical operation. Ali died, right? How, how where do we get where do we get the illusion that we're actually safe with more money? I I never understood that. I mean, I'll tell you statistically, huh? Uh, the amount of money that was stolen from me was always bigger as a percentage the more my net worth was. So, you know, when, when I was, when I had no money at all, maybe a pickpocket uh, took some of my cash from my pocket when I was in the metro, uh -huh. right? When, when I had, uh, you know, a lot of money and cars, people stole my cars. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, where do we get the illusion that if I have all the money in the world, I can cure a cancer if I get diagnosed? Where do I get the illusion that if I have all the money in the world, I'm not going to make a, 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 a simple wrong investment and end up with no money at all? I'm trying to say, and I say that with an optimistic view, actually, a lot of the spiritual teachings will tell you that happiness and peacefulness are found in seeing the truth. Okay. The truth of our life is it's a video game. It's full of challenges. It is full of challenges. Of course, I, I wouldn't dare say the truth is a video game, but the truth is it's like a video game, right? There will always be a challenge because that's the only way the game becomes worth playing, right? And those challenges are actually not solved by collecting more coins on the way. They are solved by collecting the skill that enables you to solve the challenges even in the absence of coins. And, and that's the whole trick. Huh? The whole trick is what should you collect as you come across life? Should you collect more money that is, uh, 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 you know, uh, unguaranteed that will be slipping away, that is actually depreciating because of the currency exchange rates all the time? Uh, you know, the, the declining purchasing powers, the, 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 the uh, growing profitability of the consumer, cons you know, consumer goods establishment and the product uh, building establishments? Or should you collect the skills, the skills to be able to navigate a challenging situation, regardless of what life throws at you? The skills of actually finding peace, finding uh, uh, your, your inner uh, anchor, as things change around you, like a true video gamer, a true video gamer, if you shake for a second hmm, while challenges are thrown at you, you lost a small second that is important for you to untangle yourself from the situation. So is it, isn't that what we should collect? Shouldn't we count through life that we have a net worth of spiritual, peaceful, skillful, abilities to navigate the world and then let the world throw whatever it wants at us. And actually talking about uh, the relationship between uh, parents and uh, children, I also feel like um, the child will be much richer with uh, wisdom than with money. Uh, and oh, actually yeah. money can make you a very sad kid uh, somehow. And I've, I know Absolutely. some. Absolutely. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the child is already wise until we spoil their wisdom. Children yeah. are pure. They're happy. They're innocent. They're honest. They're playing. And while they're playing, they're incredibly creative. They're incredibly productive. They're putting in endless energy. And then we tell them, stop all of this. You know, this is a waste of time. You need to get serious. Mm -hmm. and like, 
what's serious? I'm six, you know, but then you say, you, you know, seriously, I mean, remember, huh? All of us went through this and then you, they put you in school and they say, stop doing all that you know how to do as instinctively as, a, as you are as a human. And let's do things differently. Now, let's sit in a classroom, listen for eight hours a day, never object to the stupid things that the teacher is saying. And if you, if you hate social studies, it doesn't really matter. Just spend your life learning social studies anyway. Right. And then we tell those children to excel in life. Now, of course, mo many of us, uh, believe it or not, objected for a day or a, or a month or some of us for th the entire duration of our teenage or whatever that is trying to say, guys, this is not how I'm supposed to live. But then we eventually all conform because the system is so strong. Mm -hmm. ch ch children are already wise. We spoil them by the preconceived beliefs that we have built around the modern world. By doing that, we deny them the right from exploring their, their own world, their own capabilities, their own skills, their own talents, and perhaps their own spirituality. We, you know, one of the biggest uh, myths in the world is that to be religious uh, uh, is, to, is to follow Jesus or Muhammad or Buddha. No, we all follow religions. Even atheists follow religions. Even capitalists follow religions. We just call them different things. But the reality is, Everyone that aligns so closely with one of those teachings is just a fanatic. It's like, uh, you know, uh, vote, following Manchester United as a football fan, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you basically say, no, I am a very, very avid fan of, uh, uh, you know, Christianity or Buddhism, or I am a very avid fan of atheism, or I'm a very avid fan of, uh, of just making money, or I'm an avid fan of making my opinion heard and, you know, the blind freedom that, uh, that the West uh, um, uh, tries to propagate around the world. And the reality is none of them is fully right and none of them is fully wrong. And the question is, is any of them really you? Who is the real you? Totally. And actually, I was thinking uh, while you're talking, because I know you, you talked today at a conference uh, in Paris called uh, Sustainable Brands. And yes. I actually received uh, the founder of the conference in, on that podcast. And, and I also feel like um, this mindset, this spirituality somehow is more uh, sustainable than um, the one that is uh, made out of uh, dollars and uh, possessions and, uh, you know, uh, having more and more and more, which eventually doesn't bring you um, happiness or, Absolutely. I mean, you can call it success if you like, but I mean, not you, but I mean, people <laughs> listening, um, yeah. they can call it success if they like, but um, eventually it doesn't work like that. I mean, I'm not talking about the people who can't eat uh, while they are they are angry, but um, but beside that, it just doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, even even when you think of the people that can't eat because they're hungry, it's an issue of lack of spirituality. Believe it or not, huh? Uh, spirituality, not religion. But remember, huh? So in in spirituality, when you know deep inside you that there is more to you than uh, uh, this physical form, you realize that you're connected to everyone else. I was writing about this today. I'm almost finishing my, uh, my next book. I was writing about the fact that growing up in Egypt, uh, even though we didn't have social security, we didn't have health insurance, we didn't have all of the things that the West demands of their governments and retirement and what have you, we had that constant peace in us because we knew that if something went wrong for me, my cousins, my best friends, my family will take care of me, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We were much bigger than one person. And the individualism of the West has taken that away from all of us. Now, part of that spiritual approach is to realize I'm not an individual. I am, there is so much more to me than this physical form that is limited by the boundaries of my skin. And what is more for me there is something that links to everyone else. It's, it's, it's a community, not an individual. And when you really start to internalize that, then you recognize that actually there is not much to fear. There is not much to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to worry about uh, because at least you have people who have your back. Now, this is one side of the story. The other more important side of the story, if you ask me, is so go back to that concept of of being spiritual. Hmm? 
and I'll, I'll share my own personal example, and, and I know some people will find that very weird. I was born a Muslim, and Islam is a, is a confer, confer, conformative religion, right? It's mm -hmm. like, you do things as we tell you, because we have uh, consulted with God, we've done our research, and we know exactly uh, how you should do everything from the minute you wake up to the minute you, you die, uh, and that way you will end up in heaven. Now, I'm not against that, by the way, but I actually don't think that this is the purpose of it at all. I think the purpose is for you to seek and search and find your own truth. So at age 16, I started to tell myself, perhaps if I'm going to spend my re the rest of my life confirming, I might as well actually do the math of it. And so, so I basically did what I call the mathematics of God or the mathematics of design, if you want, mm -hmm. uh, which is found, found in, in my book, Soul for Happy. I won't bore you with it. But it came, I came to a point where I just, from a mathematical point of view, I told myself there is a much higher probability uh, uh, that there is a design behind our universe than, it, it, than there is a, a, a probability that everything happened through randomness and constant trial and error, okay? I'm not saying that it isn't evolution, but I'm saying that evolution is actually part of the design. Now, when I arrived at that, my entire life shifted. I was 16 at the time. And then I told myself, look at this. If I actually question what they tell me, I can come to a more solid belief in what I actually believe. And, and from there, I started to study every religion on earth. I, I, I read in so many of them. And they're all so beautiful, yet they're all corrupt in a way or another. Mm -hmm. There is a beautiful core in every one of them. And there is a, a, a lot of man-made, man-inserted rules and regulations, if you want. Mm -hmm. As, you know, a, an emotional person would take this and say, you know what? Screw this. I don't want to follow it. It has man-made rules. I don't want to follow anybody. I am a free person. A wiser person would say, hmm, perhaps I should find the beautiful core because that's an interesting way of finding my spirituality and then drop everything else that is not part of that beautiful core. And I engaged in years of doing this, looking at my own religion, Islam, you know, trying to find what of it is a beautiful core message and what of it is man-made. Looked mm -hmm. at Christianity, looked at Buddhism, looked at Hinduism, looked at Taoism and so on and so forth. And every one of them has the beauty and the corruption right? Mm -hmm. Take all of them together and you will find your own personal religion, the Gregology of, of, <laughs> of life, right? And, and that would be your own spirituality. I, I even learned from an atheist view uh, to question everything. I, I learned from an atheist view that maybe perhaps the divine is not actually fully engaged in everyday uh, decisions of our life. A game designer doesn't actually come and impact your way of playing the game on day-to-day -day basis. You know, when the, the, when the game is designed, you're the one that's playing, right? The, the trick here is as an individual, can you allow yourself to not be influenced by anything that you're told, including the, 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 the religious views and the views that say religion is wrong? Can you find the beauty in everything in every one of those views. And I, I'm wondering, maybe that's a tricky question, but do you think that you need to have experienced um, wealth to come up, to come back to that uh, spirituality that is, well, hmm. actually I've been there and I can tell you it's not working. It's making me think of, uh, you know, that book Thrive, um, that, yeah. um, the, you, you know, the book from um, the person who created uh, the Huffington Post, Ariana. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, she, she, she achieved all of that. She made children, she was a millionaire, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And eventually she was so sad. And um, I was wondering, do, do you think that you need to have that experience of wealth to realize that eventually this is just not working? Well, unfortunately, we humans are stubborn. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's easier uh, to try something for yourself and then say, ah, it's not working, okay? Mm -hmm. but, but it's so much more efficient if you don't, <laughs> you know, if you, if, if, you, if you just take the shortcut, if you just really trust 
uh, in the experience of others and learn from observing. So, so there are two types of learners in the world. There are those who learn from observing others do something, and there are those who learn from, uh, uh, from actually doing it themselves. And those who value that experience of doing, them, doing it themselves, whatever it is that you're going to tell them, they'll say, ah, yeah, uh, I don't believe you. Okay. I have, I have to admit to you that it's a bit of a teenage approach to say, I don't believe you. I have to try it myself. And mm -hmm. as I became more and more, I, as I became older and perhaps a little slower and, you know, started to not lose energy, but direct my energy more efficiently, I started to, to actually, you know, take what others teach me very, very seriously. I don't take it for on, on face value. I don't accept it blindly. But I, uh, you know, uh, one of my, hopefully my future books within in, into 20, 2020 is a book that I call Compartment 2, uh, which basically allows me to take knowledge that is transferred to me and put it in one of three compartments uh, instead of just the two compartments that were normally taught at school. In school, we are taught that something is either right or wrong, that something is, is you know, good or bad, that something is accepted by me or rejected by me. And the reality is that 99% of life, I mean, don't take the number accurately, mm -hmm. but the majority, the majority of life is neither good or bad, uh, is neither right or wrong. It's just somewhere in the middle, in the gray scale. And I call that compartment two. And so in my, in my approach to life, I try to define uh, that something is either in compartment one, in my limited perception of life, it's 100% correct, or it's very, very likely to be correct or it's in compartment three, it's very likely to be not correct. But if it, is com it, if, it, if it is in compartment two, I tell myself, perhaps there is a possibility that it is correct and a possibility that it isn't. And maybe I should go through life solving for both. I should, you know, uh, you know I had a, an interesting conversation with a Buddhist friend uh, where, you know, the, the Buddhist be, uh, faith believes or the Buddhist philosophy believes in uh, uh, karma and reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And I and I asked and I said, look, I don't have a position for or against reincarnation. I couldn't find the scientific uh, 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 proof for or against it. But what if it wasn't true? What if it was in compartment two? OK, what if it wasn't surely uh, true uh, or surely not true? How would the entire philosophy change? And it's such an interesting question when you go through life, every part of your life, assuming that something could be A or B not a either a or b uh, you could probably solve your, pro your your life in so many different ways and take many more um exciting paths uh through life as you as you just allow yourself the right to debate that something that you were told is right actually isn't it's, it's super interesting like would would it be the the, the 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 advice that you give to people like when they wonder about how they should manage their life and a lot of people I feel are very um, um, centered on 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 the present uh, also self centered somehow um, mm -hmm. wondering what their mission on the planet is or why they're here. Um, I think it, it, this uh, spirituality somehow, which is, again, not specifically connected to religion, uh, is, I mean, religion is growing also. Um, every religion is growing. Every every mm -hmm. tribe of religion is growing. But uh, in the West, at least, um, religion is kind of down. Um, mm -hmm. And people are searching for some truth. And that's probably why uh, they are trying to be happy. They, they, they are really uh, searching. So what would be your, your major advice, like to look at life not as black and white, but uh, as, a, as a variety of gray? Yeah, to, to, to recognize that, uh, that there is always something new that you don't know. That, you know, like Confucius says, uh, that true uh, 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 wisdom is to recognize your own ignorance. And, and in, you know, in reality, we don't know much at all. I mean, I am a highly scientific person. I, I, I study science to a deep, deep level, and I keep up with all of the scientific discoveries. And even in science, even though the brand is, hey, we know the truth, the brand is absolutely wrong. It, science itself constantly changes the truth that they have stated just 10, 10 years ago. 
right? Yeah. From 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 the earth is flat to the earth is uh, is round, but it's the center of all heavenly objects. To the earth is actually not even round; it's spherical, and it's the, just revolving around the earth in a, around the, the sun in an ellipse. To the recognition that it's actually not in an ellipse at all; that it's moving around the sun as the sun is moving and the universe is expanding, and nobody actually has any clue what the path of, uh, of Earth in the universe is because of all of those intricate movements, right? Now, think about all of this and tell yourself, I don't know. And there is a joy in not knowing. And there is a joy in revisiting everything I've been taught. From, you know, the typical, typical Frenchmanship of, I need to be sophisticated and elegant and say, Poof, no, I don't like everything uh, to start. Maybe this is the wrong education, okay? All the way to, uh, my life is about this and nothing more, okay? And if you start to revisit all of this and recognize that as a being, you're much more than your physical self, okay? That you are part of a big community of being that includes everything around you and that your life is so dependent on all of this. I think this is something that we recognize more and more with global epidemics like global warming that mm -hmm. none of us can survive alone anymore because we're together as a community destroying our habitat for all of us, right? If you start to recognize all of this, your approach to life becomes very, very different. Your approach to life becomes, this is not just about me, this is about all of us. And if I can help the universe, perhaps the universe will help me back. And when you start to think about that, maybe life's purpose becomes a, 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 a different definition. Okay, maybe it doesn't become one more car or a better car or a slightly bigger apartment. Maybe it becomes uh, an, an impact on all of us, uh, you know, uh, and on, 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 on all that we love around us. And maybe that would uh, change the way we live and work and give. Interesting. And you were saying that you were talking about, you're writing a new book, you, you almost finished. Uh, can we have the pitch of it or... <laughs> pitch. <laughs> yeah, pitch. I, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm really. I'm really happy with this one. I, I'm. This one is called the 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 little voice in your head, uh -huh. uh, which is which is an expansion of um, a, a small concept I discussed in Soul for Happy, uh, which basically starts from the statement that your, uh, you know, that your thoughts are not you. This this little voice in your head is not you. It's it's simply a biological function that is run by your brain. And if it is, uh, you know, the, the core reason for all unhappiness are thoughts that we think, then maybe we should learn to think better. And, and so in that book, I use a lot of techniques from, you know, either neuroscience or problem solving, but mainly an understanding of how the brain works as a machine, not as a piece of meat, right? I basically split, split the, the brain, if you want, into modules of software, uh, almost, uh, you know, in a simplified way saying module one does A, B, and C, module two does X, Y, and Z, and then show you where those modules are going wrong and perhaps how you can correct them. How, you know, for example, we're depending more in this materialistic world on our left brain hemisphere than our right hemisphere, brain hemisphere and how that is you know, so unfair to the feminine, how it's so unfair to the planet, what we can, you know, how it can lead to your unhappiness and how can we correct it? You know, how the parasympathetic nervous system is not engaged because we're using our sympathetic nervous system to deal with all of the stresses of the modern world. Uh, this is a module that we can actually hack into and, and change and, and that would make us happier. So all of the different components of that little voice in your head and how it operates uh and and um, yeah i'm really happy with uh, with the progress so far i think readers will be uh, will hopefully be enjoying this yeah that's a very good pitch actually <laughs> okay. um and so this podcast called vlan and uh, i would like to know what you would uh, open the door to or what you would uh, shut the door to currently in my life i think the biggest uh the biggest door i have opened is very interestingly, a door that allows me to become more feminine. Uh -huh. uh, that has nothing to do with my gender. It has nothing to do with being a man or a woman. It just has a lot to do with opening up to using more of my feminine qualities in the world. So being uh, me, an engineer uh, raised in the Middle East and uh, an executive, 
uh, I definitely used more of my left brain, uh, more of my masculine qualities in life to get to where I am today. And I think around four years ago, I recognized, four and a half years ago, I recognized that to ascend even further, I think the feminine qualities, you know, intuition, empathy, uh, uh, the ability to, uh, to, um, to have resilience, to have flow, uh, are things that I want to have more of in my life. This is what I'm totally open to. Uh, what I am uh, not open to is rigidity, uh, is, the, uh, is, the, is the idea that something is not open for conversation. Uh, everything to me is, because of that constant flow, believe it or not, everything to me is in constant evolution. Uh, you know, I, I build concepts, I write them down in a book, and then a few weeks later, I revisit them because I learn a little more and a little more mm. and a little more. And it's an incredible experience of really living and enjoying life rather than thinking that we figured it out and, you know, behaving based on an arrogance that we know it all. Wow. Thank you, Mo, for all that wisdom. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you for the opportunity. I love to be on uh, on your podcast. I, I, I hope to be in Paris soon. I'm, my plans are in summer. So my hope is maybe we can meet again then. I would, uh, th I would that, very enjoy that. Maybe we can have I, like a, a live recording. Somehow. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would love that. But I think for that, uh, our, our listeners will have to make this a successful episode as well. So... Yeah, I totally. ask them to help us do that and exactly. spread the message. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and meanwhile, hopefully spread the message of happiness. You know, still uh, uh, my number one mission so far is one billion happy. So please help me by prioritizing your own happiness and just teaching others what you learn about happiness. Uh, you know, I think our world needs that most today. Totally, totally. Thank you very much, Mo. You're so welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. All right. Thank you so much. Merci d'avoir écouté Vlan. Si vous avez aimé l'émission, vous pouvez le dire avec des étoiles, 5 de préférence sur iTunes, et le partager avec vos amis ou vos collègues. Je suis Grégory Pouy, vous pouvez me retrouver sur Twitter et LinkedIn sous le pseudo Greg from Paris. N'hésitez pas à me remonter vos remarques, vos questions, mais aussi les invités que vous aimeriez entendre. <rire>